Hello Art Journalists, this is Natalie from NK Design. Today's project took me a little bit over an hour and unlike other times, today I knew what I wanted to try. I wanted to have something in a graffiti style. I have already prepped my page with masking tape and gesso and let it dry. Using a mechanical pencil, I write down my quote in capital letters. This gives me a good base for embellishing the letters. I'm thickening up the letters and in some places a little bit more than others. I'm also adding some serifs. Now let me fast forward this. Now that is done, I'm using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in B to trace the lines. Now graffiti uh, typically has um, drop shadows and I know a lot of you guys have problems with it. So here's a little trick for you. Use some inexpensive tracing paper or deli paper and trace your words and or letters and then cut it out. Now if the light appears from the top right, your drop shadow appears on the bottom left. So you just offset your cutouts and trace the lines. So you always place the cutouts opposite of where you think the light is coming from and then you simply trace the lines. This helps you determine where the drop shadows are. And then you simply use your marker to trace the lines and if you have, like me, forgotten some lines, you simply place the cutouts back. Once that is done, you can start filling out the drop shadow. Make sure your marker or your ink is thoroughly dry before you erase the pencil lines. And here is where artistic license comes in. I don't like those small white spaces, so I fill them out. Now I create another loose line with my marker. I think it's called outer gel in graffiti lingo. To add more interest, I'm drawing some circles. Now I'm ready to add some color. I'm using distress paints for the background. Uh, one is called Stormy Sky and the other one is Weathered Wood. I start using the Debus first, but it's too much of an effort, so I'm opening up the bottles and then use simply a brush to apply. While the paint is still wet, I add some water splashes with a brush and then take it off with a kitchen towel. This gives a nice distressed look to the background. For the letters I'm also using distress paints. This time it's mustard seed and abandoned coral. Now please note that I use a dry brush for the next technique. I am coloring in the top bit with yellow, then use the same brush that I wiped off on a piece of kitchen towel to add the orange. I then blend the two colors first with the brush, but then I find it's easier with fingers. For the outside I'm using acrylic markers. 
the green one is from Elmer's Paint and the blue one is by Montana. But basically I do the same thing as I did with the acrylic paints. I first do the top bit, then the bottom bit and this time I'm blending with the dry brush. For the circles I'm going back to the distress paints and using again mustard seed and abandoned coral. For the two large circles I do the blending again but the smaller ones I just do in a solid color. Once I've done the color I'm going back to my black outlines and I redo them with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. I will also be redoing the um, drop shadows just to give it a nice solid black. It makes the bold colors pop even more. For the inner gel, or as I would say, the highlights, I'm using a white Posca marker. Time to add my date stamp and I call this one done. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I see you next time, until then, happy arting!